Anonymous coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new NECA Toys T-1000 Steel Mill version from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. As you can see, part of the 20th anniversary of Terminator 2. Absolutely gorgeous, iconic image of Arnold here sitting on top of his bike. Very cool looking. Really really great looking figure you can see it comes with a bunch of different accessories uh he's obviously got the big giant hole through his head an alternate head here on the side he comes with two fingers which is absolutely awesome because one punctures sarah connor and the other one slowly approaches her eye which is wonderful and then you can even see the damage to his foot something that um i think actually was in one of the deleted scenes of the movie i don't think it is actually in the full movie itself but in the later extended editions you actually see that and that's really cool that they included it flip around here on the back a more advanced Terminator composed of mimetic polyalloy, a liquid metal that allows it to take the shape and appearance of anyone or anything it touches. Pursuing our heroes from Cyberdyne systems, they battle one last time in the steel mill. The T-1000 tortures Sarah, urging her to call out to her son when the T-800 reappears and saves Sarah, John, and the rest of mankind absolutely cool you see the other figures that are in the line you got the motorcycle cop the pescadero hospital and then of course the endoskeleton so this is definitely a figure that i'm very impressed with and very much looking forward to so let me rip this open and see how cool he actually is okay guys so here we have the steel mill version of the t-1000 opened up and out of its packaging and this thing is absolutely incredible everything about this i absolutely love the amount of detail on this is just unbelievable i mean NECA does this all the time yet every single time that they come out with a new figure i'm more impressed than i was before I mean, this is absolutely stunning looking now there are a couple problems that i have with it number one um his fingers uh as you can see these things well they're they're probably hard to see so i'll put it on the black um i don't remember his the, the finger spikes uh curving this much in the actual movie so that really kind of sucks uh it's very unfortunate now i probably could um warm this up and probably stick it in a fr in the freezer or something and it would probably straighten that out but just because of how long they are they're I i'm afraid that they'll probably just go right back to that position again so it's really kind of unfortunate and really kind of puts a negative spin on this figure now the other thing that he comes with is an alternate head wonderful looking sculpt of robert patrick himself and again you just take this pop that off Ah, come on, that's a tough one to get in there. What the hell? There we go. Um, and uh, it's, on his, it's on the ball joint, so you get a nice range of motion, obviously, still with it. But this kind of replicates more the whole actual steel mill version, uh, specifically kind of with this. Now, what this figure is kind of an, an, a direct homage to is several deleted scenes from the Terminator 2 movie. Now, after the T-800 froze this guy with the liquid nitrogen, he then proceeded to blow him apart with the handgun. And then you see like millions of tiny little pieces going falling all over the place that actually started to damage this guy. And you could see in the deleted scenes several uh, kind of glitches that he had for example there was a scene where he grabbed hold of an arm rail his entire arm kind of changed to it to match the color of that arm rail now one scene that wasn't cut out we saw like a little flicker through his face that wasn't cut out that was left in there just to kind of uh, say yeah there's something wrong with this guy but then another scene that this is an homage to is as he's walking around he's putting his foot on the grate throughout the steel mill and his foot is actually changing and as you can see it takes on the texture of what he's actually walking walking on and you can see that it kind of uh fans out and kind of blobs a little bit and as you can see like he he leads with his heel here so that starts taking it and then this foot which is planted kind of spreads out and takes on more of that effect and i absolutely love that i mean that goes all the way around and is just absolutely wonderful that is a beautiful beautiful touch on this guy now with these fingers uh, if you really want to all you have to do is pop them out around just little ball joints so uh pop that right back in there and you can have him well i'm gonna have to kind of show you here because uh, otherwise it disappears i mean that's not nearly as bad uh this guy here is really kind of bad and that one also is just on a little tiny ball joint so you can 
put that in there, but I mean, you can have them go around looking like that. Now, what would be awesome is if for some reason they actually decided to release a Sarah Connor figure, which I really hope they do at some point in time. There is word that we're getting a Kyle Reese figure, so hopefully at some point we'll get a Sarah. What would be awesome is if they actually made the version where he's like stabbing her, and what if they actually put a hole all the way through her torso where you could take this and you could slide it all the way through, or like this finger, slide it all the way through that actual hole on the figure. So you got it, and it would like replicate kind of, uh, well, like this, going through her skin. That would look awesome. And then having, you know, the finger like this, you know, where, uh, where he's about to stab her in the eye. I mean, that would just look absolutely awesome, I think. So, hey, NECA, pay attention to my ideas. They're good. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the the fingers, the way they are right now, really is kind of unfortunate. Like I said, I probably could fix it. Um, but I honestly don't even display those with him, so it doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, the other aspect of, is the, the, the other cool kind of head that he has. And you can see, you can see that's, a, that's another wonderful sculpt and wonderful representation of Robert Patrick. And you can see all the way through, absolutely cool. I love the wrinkle effect that they have on here. Coming around to the side and you can see some more distortion. And then the back, I mean, that's just absolutely... That's just absolutely awesome. I mean, I love the, the texture and the ripple on there. I mean, that's so awesome looking. All the way through, it's just rippled and so very cool. I love that head. And when it comes down to it, that's the actual head that I use. I take this off, I put this on there, and that's the head that I use to d display this figure. I think it's the best looking. I mean, that is just wicked, wicked cool. Now, one kind of minor thing that I would also have liked to have seen is uh, since this kind of replicates those those glitches that he had, maybe have an alternate hand that was painted uh, to kind of go along with that arm rail that he grabbed that kind of changed the look of his hand. That would have been kind of cool as well. But, you know, what are you going to do? Now, in terms of his articulation, like I said, his head's on a ball joint, so you can get a nice range of motion with it. Because of the, the collar on his shirt, though, it's kind of limited. I mean, he looks really far down and, you know, left and right. But he doesn't get too much side-to-side -side motion. Uh, he's got uh, pin and socket joints here, so all the way around. He bends here at the elbow, also rotates on the same type of joint that's at the shoulder. Like I said, that the hands here, they're actually on ball joints. He rotates here at the waist. And then at the knees, he also bends and rotates. Um, that kind of creates some kind of some problem sometimes because unless you get it perfectly positioned uh, he he tends to want to kind of fall and doesn't really stand very well so you kind of have to perfectly position these feet so that he stands and is properly balanced but it's really not that ter terribly difficult now when it comes down to it this figure like i said and this character in general is one of my favorites of all time this character is wonderfully wonderfully crafted and the toy is just as wonderfully crafted as the character itself so much of what the character has is inside these figures and without a doubt, guys, I highly, highly recommend picking this up. Find him, get him, display him, and just feel the sheer awesomeness that is the T-1000. So until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. I'll talk to you later.